Those bodies admit of softening, which are not, like ice, made up of water, but in which earth predominates. All their moisture must not have left them, as in the case of natron and salt, nor must the relation of dry to moist in them be incongruous, as in the case of pottery. They must be tractile, without admitting water, or malleable, without consisting of water, and the agent in softening them is fire. Such are iron and horn, both of bodies that can melt and of bodies that cannot. Some do and some do not admit of softening in water. Copper, for instance, which can be melted, cannot be softened in water, whereas wool and earth can be softened in water, for they can be soaked. It is true that though copper can be melted, the agent in its case is not water, but some of the bodies that can be melted by water too, such as natron and salt, cannot be softened in water, for nothing is said to be so affected unless the water soaks into it and makes it softer. Some things, on the other hand, such as wool and grain, can be softened by water, though they cannot be melted. Any body that is to be softened by water must be of earth and must have its pores larger than the particles of water, and the pores themselves must be able to resist the action of water, whereas bodies that can be melted by water must have pores throughout. Why is it that earth is both melted and softened by moisture, while natron is melted but not softened? Because natron is pervaded throughout by pores, so that the parts are immediately divided by the water. But earth has also pores which do not connect and is therefore differently affected according as the water enters by one or the other set of pores. Some bodies can be bent or straightened, like the reed or the withy. Some cannot, like pottery and stone. Those bodies are apt to be bent and straightened, which can change from being curved to being straight, and from being straight to being curved. And bending and straightening consist in the change or motion to the straight or to a curve. For a thing is said to be in process of being bent, whether it is being made to assume a convex or a concave shape. So bending is defined as motion to the convex or the concave without a change of length. For if we added, or to the straight, we should have a thing bent and straight at once, and it is impossible for that which is straight to be bent. And if all bending is a bending back or a bending down, the former being a change to the convex, the latter to the concave. A motion that leads to the straight cannot be called bending, but bending and straightening are two different things. These, then, are the things that can, and those that cannot be bent and be straightened. Some things can be both broken and comminuted. Others admit only one or the other. Wood, for instance, can be broken but not comminuted. Ice and stone can be comminuted but not broken, while pottery may either be comminuted or broken. The distinction is this. Breaking is a division and separation into large parts, comminution into parts of any size. But there must be more of them than two. Now those solids that have many pores not communicating with one another are comminuable, for the limit to their subdivision is set by the pores. But those whose pores stretch continuously for a long way are breakable, while those which have pores of both kinds are both comminuable and breakable. Some things, for example, copper and wax, are impressible. Others, for example, pottery and water, are not. The process of being impressed is the sinking of a part of the surface of a thing in response to pressure or a blow, in general to contact. Such bodies are either soft, like wax, where part of the surface is depressed while the rest remains, or hard, like copper. Non-impressible bodies are either hard, like pottery, its surface does not give way and sink in, or liquid, like water, for though water does give way, it is not in a part of it, for there is a reciprocal change of place of all its parts. Those impressibles that retain the shape impressed on them and are easily molded by hand are called plastic. Those that are not easily molded, such as stone or wood, or are easily molded but do not retain the shape impressed, like wool or a sponge, are not plastic. The last group are said to be squeezable. Things are squeezable when they can contract into themselves under pressure, their surface sinking in without being broken and without the parts interchanging position, as happens in the case of water. We speak of pressure when there is movement and the motor remains in contact with the thing moved, of impact when the movement is due to the local movement of the motor. Those bodies are subject to squeezing which have empty pores, empty, that is, of the stuff of which the body itself consists, and that can sink upon the void spaces within them 
or rather upon their pores. For sometimes the pores upon which a body sinks in are not empty. A wet sponge, for instance, has its pores full. But the pores, if full, must be full of something softer than the body itself, which is to contract. Examples of things squeezable are the sponge, wax, flesh. Those things are not squeezable, which cannot be made to contract upon their own pores by pressure, either because they have no pores, or because their pores are full of something too hard. Thus, stone, iron, stone, water, and all liquids are incapable of being squeezed. Things are tractile when their surface can be made to elongate, for being drawn out is a movement of the surface, remaining unbroken, in the direction of the mover. Some things are tractile, for example, hair, thongs, sinew, dough, bird lime, and some are not, for example, water, stone. Some things are both tractile and squeezable, for example, wool. In other cases, the two qualities do not coincide. Phlegm, for instance, is tractile, but not squeezable, and a sponge squeezable, but not tractile. Some things are malleable, like copper. Some are not, like stone and wood. Things are malleable when their surface can be made to move, but only in part, both downwards and sideways with one and the same blow. When this is not possible, a body is not malleable. All malleable, bo malleable bodies are impressible, but not all impressible bodies are malleable. For example, wood, though on the whole the two go together. Of squeezable things, some are malleable and some not. Wax and mud are malleable, wool is not. Some things are thistle, for example, wood. Some are not, for example, potter's clay. A thing is thistle when it is apt to divide in advance of the instrument dividing it. For a body is said to split when it divides to a further point than that to which the dividing instrument divides it, and the act of division advances, which is not the case with cutting. Those bodies which cannot behave like this are non-thistle. Nothing soft is thistle. By soft, I mean absolutely soft and not relatively, for iron itself may be relatively soft. Nor are all hard things thistle, but only such as are neither liquid nor impressible nor comminuable. Such are the bodies that have the pores along which they cohere lengthwise and not crosswise. Those hard or soft solids are apt to be cut, which do not necessarily either split in advance of the instrument or break into minute fragments when they are being divided. Those that necessarily do so and liquids cannot be cut. Some things can be both split and cut, like wood, though generally it is lengthwise that a thing can be split and crosswise that it can be cut. For a body being divided into many parts, insofar as its unity is made up of many lengths, it is apt to be split. Insofar as it is made up of many breadths, it is apt to be cut. A thing is viscous when, being moist or soft, it is tractile. Bodies owe this property to the interlocking of their parts when they are composed like chains, for then they can be drawn out to a great length and contracted again. Bodies that are not like this are friable. Bodies are compressible when they are squeezable and retain the shape they have been squeezed into, incompressible when they are either inapt to be squeezed at all or do not retain the shape they have been squeezed into. Some bodies are combustible and some are not. Wood, wool, bone are combustible. Stone, ice are not. Bodies are combustible when their pores are such as to admit fire and their longitudinal pores contain moisture weaker than fire. If they have no moisture or if, as in ice or very green wood, the moisture is stronger than fire, they are not combustible. Those bodies give off fumes which contain moisture, but in such a form that it does not go off separately in vapor when they are exposed to fire. For vapor is a moist secretion tending to the nature of air produced from a liquid by the agency of burning heat. Bodies that give off fumes give off secretions of the nature of air by the lapse of time. As they perish away, they dry up or become earth. But the kind of secretion we are concerned with now differs from others in that it is not moist nor does it become wind, which is a continuous flow of air in a given direction. Fumes are a common secretion of dry and moist together caused by the agency of burning heat. Hence, they do not moisten things, but rather color them. The fumes of a woody body are called smoke. I mean to include bones and hair and everything of this kind in the same class. For there is no name common to all the objects that I mean, but, for all that, these things are all in the same class by analogy. Compare what Empedocles says. They are one and the same, hair and leaves and the thick wings of birds and scales that grow on stout limbs. The fumes of fat are a sooty smoke and those of oily substances a greasy steam. Oil does not boil away or thicken by evaporation, 
because it does not give off vapor but fumes. Water, on the other hand, does not give off fumes but vapor. Sweet wine does give off fumes, for it contains fat and behaves like oil. It does not solidify under the influence of cold, and it is apt to burn. Really, it is not wine at all, in spite of its name, for it does not taste like wine, and consequently does not inebriate as ordinary wine does. It contains but little, little fumicable stuff, and consequently is inflammable. All bodies are combustible that dissolve into ashes, and all bodies do this that solidify under the influence either of heat or of both heat and cold. For we find that all these bodies are mastered by fire. Of stones, the precious stone called carbuncle is the least amenable to fire. Of combustible bodies, some are inflammable and some are not, and some of the former are reduced to coals. These are called inflammable, which produce flame, and those which do not are called non-inflammable. Those fumigable bodies that are not liquid are inflammable, but pitch, oil, wax are inflammable in conjunction with other bodies rather than by themselves. Most inflammable are those bodies that give off smoke. Of bodies of this kind, those that contain more earth than smoke are apt to be reduced to coals. Some bodies that can be melted are not inflammable, for example, copper, and some bodies that cannot be melted are inflammable, for example, wood, and some bodies can be melted and are also inflammable, for example, frankincense. The reason is that wood has its moisture altogether, and this is continuous throughout, and so it burns up, whereas copper has it in each part but not continuous, and insufficient in quantity to give rise to flame. In frankincense, it is disposed in both of these ways. Fumigable bodies are inflammable when earth predominates in them, and they are consequently such as to be unable to melt. These are inflammable because they are dry like fire. When this dry comes to be hot, there is fire. This is why flame is burning smoke or dry exhalation. The fumes of wood are smoke, those of wax and frankincense and such like, and pitch and whatever contains pitch or such like are sooty smoke, while the fumes of oil and oily substances are a greasy steam. So are, all, so are those of all substances which are not at all combustible by themselves, because there is too little of the dry in them, the dry being the means by which the transition to fire is effected, but burn very readily in conjunction with something else. For the fat is just a conjunction of the oily with the dry. So those bodies that give off fumes, like oil and pitch, belong rather to the moist, but those that burn to the dry.